Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. So this week what I want to speak to you about is stress. It's something that most of us experience through our lives and it can be in any or every area of our life. It can be in relationships, it can be due to do with finances, it can be to do with work, it can be to do with health, it can be in any area. And I'm, I'm not saying those are all the areas, but those are just a few of them. But before I go into sharing one way that you can deal with stress, I just want to explain a little bit of what stress is. So if you've listened to any of my episodes, or some of them, I suppose, because I don't talk about this in every single one, but I talk about it a lot, is how the subconscious plays a big role in our lives. Now, the purpose of the subconscious is to ensure our survival. It's there to help us move away from what we perceive as pain and towards pleasure. And the reason it does that is it assumes that pleasure is something that's good for us and ensures our survival and something that represents pain <laughs> is something that's detrimental and likely to cause us harm, possibly death and jeopardize our survival. And how the subconscious does this is first of all by creating thoughts. Those thoughts then create emotions and hopefully, as far as the subconscious is concerned, from those emotions comes action. But sometimes we get caught up in situations that we can't always see an easy action from. Or what can happen is that we've got a lot going on and we have so many different things that we're juggling that we can't always see a way forward clearly because we're just trying to keep the balls in the air. We're just trying to keep the aspects of our lives from drowning us rather than actually sort of enjoying life and living. And this is where it kind of gets stressful. So the only thing that really causes us stress is when what's going on in our external world is not something that we can easily see a way to deal with. And when that happens, it's almost like a bit of a blockage. So the subconscious is firing off thoughts, creating emotions, but that is not releasing out into action. Or there is so many different things to be doing that we've got thoughts and emotions going, but we don't have the time or the energy to create all the actions to deal with everything that's going on. And what happens then, it's a bit like an engine overheating in that there's a lot of energy going in and not enough <laughs> energy going out. So the only thing that really causes us stress is an overabundance of thoughts. Um, I know that's simplifying it drastically, but in a nutshell, that is what it is. And so the strategy I'm going to share with you today is incredibly simple. Um, it's so simple that you'll most likely just think it'll never work or it's a bit pointless and there's no point trying it. But I was actually chatting with a colleague this week and I told them about this particular strategy and, and I stipulated and I say, I told them that I know you're most likely going to think it's irrelevant and it's a bit silly and not do it, but don't listen to that. Do it anyway, because this particular person was struggling with sleep. And anyway, they came in the next day and they said it was unbelievable because they slept well for the first time in a really long time. So it does work and it's so simple that you're most likely going to think it's a bit ridiculous, but it still works incredibly well. And the aim is to get what's going on inside your mind onto a piece of paper. <laughs> That's as simple as it is, because when you've got it onto a piece of paper, you've taken it out of the realm of sort of the intangible and you've made it tangible. And instead of your mind working over everything that's going on, it doesn't have to work about it because you've acknowledged it. And in acknowledging it, your mind can then let it go. Now, we can't always create the decision from what's going on, but ideally what you'll do is you'll create a list. You don't need to talk about the story behind the different topics that are going on in your head. You don't have to create a narrative. All you need to do is to write down the different, er the different topics so finances or relationship or a particular relationship if you want to get specific. Um, the next step, which you can't always do and you don't always have to do to give yourself some relief, but the next step, the ideal step, would be then to make a decision on whatever it is that's going on in your mind. 
And that decision doesn't even have to be made right now. The decision could even be a decision to be made in six months time. So um, many years ago when I had my wine business, um, the sort of parent company that I used to import wine from was quite a massive corporation. And they decided that the best thing for my business in Botswana was to join partnerships with a distribution company. And it seemed like a really good idea at the time, but ultimately it proved to be quite a catastrophic idea for me personally and for the business actually as a whole, because the distribution company was so large that it only delivered to large retail outlets, which meant that all the different small little restaurants and small companies that I used to deal with, um, I had no way to deliver wine to. And so it was, it was quite stressful because the business that I'd created um, the way that I created I was no longer to be able to service all the customers that I had, which meant I had to cut back on customers, which meant I cut back on profits and margins and blah, blah, blah. And when I started trying to solve this problem, um, I didn't really get a response from the organisations in South Africa. And it was really stressful. But when I applied what I'm sharing with you now, the way that I did it was A, I jotted down the issues that I had, and B, I made a decision. And the decision, I couldn't, I couldn't make a decision right then and there to leave and to pack it in and to walk away from it because obviously it was a quite a large business. It wasn't something that I could make that decision on lightly and quickly. So what I decided on was a set period of time. And in that time, I decided on actions that I would take to try and get the issues resolved. I decided that every week, I would contact the organisation that I worked with in South Africa and request that we resolve this problem together. And I gave myself enough time to know that if they were likely to do something to help me and assist me, then it would have happened by then. And if they weren't, I got to the point where financially it made sense to cut off ties because beyond that I would end up losing money. And in that it gave me a lot of peace because no longer was I kind of scrabbling with what did I need to do or how did I need to do it, I'd laid out a plan. And all I needed to do after that was to drop the emotions around it because whenever you make a decision from an emotion or take action or react to an emotion that you're feeling, stress, fear, um, anger, hurt, you know, rejection, whatever it happens to be, then what you tend to do is cause the very thing that you're actually afraid of from happening. So once you've made those decisions and you've written down your list, it's then to be able to acknowledge the emotions you're feeling and do whatever you need to do to let go of those emotions. Go for a walk, um, understand that the emotions are coming from the thoughts. Remember I said at the beginning of this episode that it's thought, emotion, and then action that the, the subconscious is trying to create within you. So once you've acknowledged that the, subconscious, the emotion the subconscious is triggering in you, and that it comes from fear and you've listened to it, but you don't need to act from it. You can take a deep breath, do something relaxing and let the emotion go. When you know you're in a place of peace and calm, then with your list in front of you, you can decide on actions that you need to take, decisions you need to make with those things in front of you and do them in a creative way. Do them in a way that helps you to build the future that you want rather than reacting from fear that you would have been as you would have been doing when you're stressed. So it's really very simple. The main idea behind all of this is to get those thoughts in your head, the ones that are causing you all of the stress, down onto a piece of paper so that you have them there in the physical reality. And after that, if you choose to, you can then take the other steps that I've, I've told you. And you'll find that you can then let it all go and you'll find your stress levels decrease dramatically. Now, quite often when we're stressed, sleep is one of the hardest things for us. So the best thing to do if you're struggling to sleep and you find you're really stressed is to keep a pad and paper beside your bed. And if you happen to wake up or you're trying to go to sleep and you're not able to, is to jot down all the things that you're worrying about on a piece of paper and make the very simple decision that you'll have a look over it and make decisions about it in the morning. And even with that simple decision, you'll find that you sleep more deeply, that you're more relaxed, because your mind isn't trying to find solutions. It's almost as if it's parked it and it can rest because it knows that you've acknowledged it and that you're going to deal with it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and in the links below you will find links to my website where you can contact me if you're interested in coaching or if you're interested in any of my online courses 
I'm also doing a monthly Ho'oponopono clearing and if you're interested in joining that then there'll be a link in the show notes as well as well as a link to a video explaining a little bit more about Ho'oponopono should you not know anything about it and you're curious and want to learn more. Have a fabulous week, so much love from me to you, bye bye.